Okay, Ariel, what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking this is the thing at the eye place. <laughs> I, I put my boob here. Why is it so big? Today, the Tri Moms are here together to do something that the guys can't do. We're gonna get mammograms. I'm excited for the Tri Moms to free the nipple. It'll have a black bar over it. Okay. I'm gonna need a very big black bar. <laughs> I just, when I'm breastfeeding or pregnant, my areola go from like this to like, whoa! Dr. Heather Richardson. I am one of the breast surgeons at Bedford Breast Center in Beverly Hills. And we want to talk about mammograms and breast cancer screening. We want to talk about boobs. <laughs> <laughs> All the girls. I've been told that we're getting mammograms. What is that? I don't know. I don't actually know. Okay, I was having lunch with Rachel and you asked me if I had ever had a mammogram before. And I was like, yeah, I've had a mammogram. Like, my doctor felt for lumps and you laughed at me. Well, I'm Victoria Murphy, and my daughter is Amari Robertson, and she's two. Have you ever had one? Yes, I have. I was 24 um, when I had mine. So Dr. Richardson, can you tell us exactly what a mammogram is? Mammogram uses x-rays, ionizing radiation, to look through your breast tissue. The idea is that there are tissues that are very thin that the x-rays pass through very easily, and then there might be tissues that capture the x-rays and block the x-rays, and that can be either very dense breast tissue that is the milk producing tissue, or sometimes it, it's the earliest signs of cancers and changes in the breast growth. Hey, beautiful. Hi, Dr. Richardson. All right, you ready to get topless and lubed? Yeah, <laughs> always. First of all, are there any one area or is there any one thing about your breast tissue that you're particularly worried about and you want me to pay special attention to? No, uh, I am breastfeeding, so the, my breasts feel different all day long. Try to schedule your mammogram after your period. That's when your breast tissue is gonna be the least swollen, the least tender. You don't want any lotions, deodorant, or really perfumes. Yeah, we have wipes for that. <laughs> you put on deodorant today? I put on a lot. Of today. <laughs> yeah, most centers, and we do, have little wipes where you can wipe everything off, so fear not, we can certainly get an accurate mammogram. I mean, if you, we don't have to cancel it. We're just moving up the boobs this morning. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Yeah. I want we'll them see. to look I want good. them to look good on camera. <laughs> shine. I'm gonna have you look straight ahead. I'm gonna check out your thyroid gland in your neck and feel along your collarbone for any lumps or bumps there, and I'm sure it will all be safe and healthy. So, swallow for me. Mm. Yep. <laughs> Don't feel anything that worries me at all. How often should you get a mammogram? Right now, the, some of the formal recommendations are to consider doing it maybe starting at 45 and then talking to your doctor about maybe doing it every other year, every two years. Start annual mammograms at 50. One of the things we like is to talk about uh, individual risk factors and really kind of plan it individually for our own patients. So I'm gonna just take a look, make sure there's nothing obvious. So your skin looks really even and healthy, your nipples look normal. I'm noticing your left breast is slightly larger than your right. 10 to 20% of women, one breast is slightly larger than the other and that can be incredibly normal. So. Yeah, this one makes a hell of a lot more work. All right, that so that's one. the workhorse. All yeah. right, fantastic. We'll let you lay back. Let me know if you have any discomfort or if there's anything that you feel that feels abnormal. Carol is my childhood best friend. Her mom had breast cancer. Um, several times. I mean, you know, kind of went into remission, and it came back um, when we were when we were kids. Yes, I unfortunately, I had a friend diagnosed with cancer. She was 26, and I was 23 at the time. She was diagnosed April 17th, and she passed May 7th. So it was uh, the wildest three weeks. It scared the hell out of all of us. I knew there was breast cancer. I have it on both sides of my family, but it was older. People, my aunts, my grandma, I never, never knew anyone young. And so I think for all of us, it wasn't a question of like, how do we, it was like, when do we go get a mammogram? Because if it could happen to her, it could happen to anybody. So I was 24 and I was hanging out with my friends one night at a party like you do at 24 and I just rolled to the side and I my arm touched on my boob and I could feel something under it. But I tried to remain like pretty glass half full about it until I could see someone because you don't want to just panic, right? Yeah. And you don't want to Google it, that's for sure. No. 
course. And I went and saw a doctor shortly after, and they were like, oh, that's gotta be like a fibroadenoma. Um, because you're 25. Anyways, what I was told about it when I saw a doctor was, it'll go away with your period. If it doesn't, come back. But of course, Ariel, I was worried about it. Of course you were worried about it, and of course it didn't go away. It, it didn't, but I didn't wait for it to go away. I immediately um, found a clinic, and it took me three or four weeks to get even like back to the back with a radiologist to do a mammogram. It took forever. I found the lump right before my birthday, which is July 18th, and I was diagnosed on Labor Day, September 6th. Wow. That's how long it took. Is there a good reason to have mammograms before 40? Yes, if you have a family history where you have a younger uh, family member who's had uh, breast cancer that's more of a direct relative to you, like an older sister, or your mom. If they, for instance, had breast cancer at say 42, we would subtract 10 years and want you to start screening at 32. Once I was diagnosed, we did a lumpectomy, which is where they just removed that tumor and a small surgery. Also, sentinel node removal, so they remove part of your lymph nodes. I wanted to have a mastectomy where they remove all of your breasts from the get-go, and my doctors really talked me out of it because it was a much bigger surgery. Oh, I had very large boobs. So I feel like they'd been a focal point of like my dating and uh, dressing life, you know? Like if you name the stuff you like about your body, they were like one of those things that I would have named as like, yeah, I, got I got great boobs. And then funnily enough, I hated them. <laughs> I wanted them gone immediately. And they were like, no, 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 slow your roll, slow down. It's hard surgery, more surgeries. So just do the lumpectomy. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Carmen, how are you? I'm okay. Can you open the gown for me? Yeah. We're gonna do a, just a screening routine mammogram on you, so it's gonna be super fast. It's been three years since my last mammogram, but you know, I have family history and things, so I'm really excited to do this. I have a history of breast cancer on both sides of my family, my aunt, my dad's sister, and then on my mother's side, my grandmother. I put my boob here. <laughs> Why is it so big? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oh, see, she's, she, she sides me up. <laughs> I mean, normally it's after I see you, but because you're mentioning it. <laughs> I mean, I will be in the same category, so. <laughs> All right, Ariel, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to put a shield on you. Okay. Uh, so this one, you hold it in here, and I'm going to bring it around. Okay. And we're going to do two images of each breast. Okay. Uh, we do one pressing from top to bottom, and the other one pressing sideways, where you will feel the pressure up here by your uh, axilla. Uh, we want to start with the right one, so you come up here. It's going to be a little cold. It's going to be a little uncomfortable, but just for seconds. All you have to do is not move. Oh, keep going. And when I tell you, you hold your breath. Perfect. You can breathe now. One down. It's okay, we'll clean that after. The mammogram itself takes about 10 to 15 seconds of you being in the paddle and pressing down. It's about how thin can we get the breast tissue so that when the x-ray looks through it, it's seeing the tissue as cleanly as possible. If the tissue is really wadded up on itself and very thick, well then it is artificially gonna look like there's lots of lumps in there. So we wanna thin everything out so we can see through it as best as possible. Excellent, you can breathe. Okay. Now we're gonna switch. Just face me the whole time with your face and the body straight forward. You're basically getting a Xerox. You're getting a Xerox of your boob. <laughs> what? Wait, so does it flatten it like this? Uh -huh. Oh my God. Excellent, you can read. What was that like? Ariel, we're halfway through. We're gonna turn the machine this way. And we're gonna do those side views that I explained to you. We're gonna go up into your axilla and to see your lymph nodes and go all that area, the pectoralis muscle. So this one is a little bit more uncomfortable. And now we do your side view. The most common way in this day and age, we really like to do 3D tomosynthesis mammography. It's like a little mini, almost CT scan for your breast. And then the computer takes the images and kind of puts them together. Hold your breath. You can breathe. It's no worse than going to the eye doctor. <laughs> you can breathe and we're all done. <gasps>
It felt like when your baby is just harassing you for milk and they're just pulling and tugging and they don't care. We are done. You can breathe. It's literally a photocopy of my... <laughs> Can you tell us how common breast cancer is in women? As you get older, the chances get higher that you're going to have breast cancer. One out of eight women get breast cancer. So I did the surgery, and then shortly after that, I started chemo. And I did a course of chemo called ACT that was infamous at the time. This was like 2010. That's a really, really, really tough course of chemo. Um, I did it over the course of four months every two weeks. So what the chemo does is it eradicates all fast growing cells in your body, regardless of what they are. That's why your hair doesn't grow. And so I had like a head shaving party and all of my friends came over and uh, I shaved my head and my friend Luke shaved his head. It looks really good with the, the short haircut. Short hair. And now we're gonna go. We went and saw Harry Potter in the theaters, and Luke and I are sitting in the theater, and we're like, oh shit, we look like Voldemort. <laughs> we look terrible. <laughs> During that first round of cancer, I told my best friends if I got it again, I wouldn't treat it. Because it was Brutal. Of course, I would eat my words later. <laughs> but that was the first time I had breast cancer. This whole hurrah wraps up with a mammogram that comes back clean. And my big oncologist, I had several oncologists at this point, but my big one who was sort of overseeing green lighting treatment was like, okay, we'll see you in like a year. And I was just like, no, I want an MRI. And she's like, your insurance will never pay for it. I'm not scheduling it. It's extra radiation. And I was like, no, I want an MRI. So I go to my surgeon. I walk into my surgeon's room and I slam the door and I push a chair over and I'm like, I can't move on until you order an MRI. I was like sobbing and she was like, okay, okay. I get a call after school one day and they're like, we found a tiny something. And they're like, this is why we don't order MRIs because we found a tiny something and now you're gonna be all freaked out. And so I go in, we do a biopsy and they do, there's just such a tell. You're sitting in the biopsy room and they're like, um, so did anyone come here with you today? And you're like, oh fuck, I'm dying. <laughs> yes, my boyfriend's in the waiting room, go get him. I'll wait for you to tell me I have cancer again. <laughs> And of course I did! How many months was this after you had just finished your treatment? A month, maybe. So then, at that point, I was like out of like a lot of treatment options. I had done lifetime doses of ACT. I had done a lifetime dose of radiation. So then I decided to do, I mean, I didn't decide. I was told mastectomy was my only option. So I did both. I did bilateral. So I know I'll be doing an ultrasound today because I'm breastfeeding. So what are the key differences between a mammogram and getting an ultrasound of your breast? So ultrasound uses sound waves. It doesn't use any radiation and there's no compression. The technology is the same and the way the image cap is captured is the same. We do the handheld ultrasound on our patients. So we're glazing through, we're looking through all of your tissue in two different directions. Let's start looking around. So I'm gonna take two views of your breast tissue. I'm gonna go kind of around like a ring. This very top layer here is your skin. This white fluffy tissue is your milk producing tissue that's at work right now. And then here is a rib right here. Here's muscle in between and on top of your ribs. And then this is your lung tissue right here. So all of these things that are kind of converging and we see them heading up to your nipple up in this area. All of these things that are kind of rising to the occasion, those are your milk ducts full of milk. So now I'm always fascinated with like, how am I holding like four ounces exactly. of liquid in there? And that's what it looks like. It's amazing. I didn't have any medical anxiety until this past pregnancy. I always thought of myself as a healthy person. But once I experienced having hyperemesis during my last pregnancy, it was my first time acknowledging like, oh, I could be really, really sick. And so now I do have a little bit more anxiety over like how my body can fail me. I'm gonna check your thyroid gland just like we did before. Swallow for me. 
And I'm just gonna look with my eyes to see sort of like, yeah. what is your, you have a beautiful see. reconstruction. You I got know. your nipples, that's fantastic. I did, and you can see my scars like here. That's fabulous. This is the lumpectomy, lumpectomy. this one. Port. And then my port. So in April of 2012, I had the bilateral mastectomy. And then at this point, I've done lifetime doses of all these drugs, so they just treated it with this really experimental course of chemotherapy that had not really been combined before. And I ended up calling it quits after eight because it was so brutal that I just couldn't, I couldn't function. I do feel like I have a little bit of PTSD doing this. It makes you perfect know? sense. <laughs> it does make perfect sense. Yeah. It is definitely a reliving kind of a thing. And it's okay, you want a, you want a tissue? <laughs> Yeah. Let's get you a tissue. You should be one right under, over here. <laughs> a completely reasonable thing to cry about. <laughs> You're totally comfortable with you getting a little teary about that. It's okay. okay, I'm gonna keep going. Yeah. Let's let, go. me let me know. You let me know. Let me look up at your lymph nodes. Now you've had yeah. lymph nodes removed, which we yeah. know. I do see what looks like a healthy lymph node right here. It looks totally fine. It's right here. I think that's a little lymph node. And your cancer was here on the right side. So I'm gonna pay special attention to right around where your cancer used to be. Skin thickness looks totally even here. The fatty tissue that's here is very thin and even. So you're all good. This side is green light. You're all great. We're just gonna take little pictures documenting how great everything looks. And we'll go to the other side. Hooray! Yay! I always wanted kids and I had to grapple with this very intense thing. They were like, you may or may not ever get your period again. 25 year olds don't get breast cancer very often. So it was all really unknown. And I had to decide if I was going to freeze embryos. And um, that was all out of pocket too. And it was like, I kind of wanted to do it, but they were like, okay, to start, it's $18,000. I decided not to, but I knew I wanted to have kids. And I did lose my period during both rounds of chemo and I got it back on the other side. Hi, Ariel. I'm Dr. Moss. I'm the radiologist here, so I'll be reading your mammogram. This is my pancake boob. This is your pancake boob. We generally start screening at age 40, so okay. this is early for you. What we see, the white part is very dense glandular tissue. You may have known that, that you already had dense breasts. And then- I thought they were not dense. Becoming a mom, let's say in the first like year and a half, two years, you don't think about your own health very much at all. But then when you sort of emerge from the world of having a newborn and you're realizing that you are your own person again, you're like, oh wait, I need to make sure that I am alive for you. That I take care of myself so that you learn to take care of yourself. So this is one view of your mammogram. First thing I notice is a little micro clip there, so I'm assuming you had a biopsy at I some did. time on the mm -hmm. right. Yeah, since it's still there, I'm also assuming it was benign because yes. if it hadn't been, the clip wouldn't be there. In the beginning, um, getting a mammogram, I was anxious just because of seeing my friend go through that and knowing that it could be anybody at any point, I was very nervous. Um, the first time I went, actually, they found a lump. Um, it was non-cancerous, but we went through the whole process of making the appointment, waiting, going through the procedure. What we look for with this is symmetry, and this white tissue here is dense glandular tissue, and the darker, blacker tissue is fat, so you have a normal distribution distribution, then we do this other view, and this visualizes the axilla and the muscle. You can see that these are completely symmetric. I don't see anything jumping out at me at all. This okay. is the one where they squished you from side to side, That's and it's important to catch this part of the tissue because we want to visualize as much tissue as possible. Okay. If all of us lived to be 100 and died of nothing else, it would mean that once we get to age 100, one out of eight of us would to be told at some point in time that they found a breast cancer cell in our body. Now that doesn't mean we're dying. In reality, if you're a 40-year-old woman, it's really one out of 65. So it's about 1.5% chance. It's a good idea in your late 20s, early 30s to maybe have a talk with your doctor, especially if you're a person of color or if you have Ashkenazi Jewish heritage to really talk about your family history. We might wanna do some gene screening. We might wanna do some genetic testing to see, do you have a broken gene? I've looked underneath your nipple and I don't see any growths or any lumps inside those milk ducts. They look super healthy. And now I'm gonna look up underneath your, lymph, your underarm for your lymph nodes. That is the most gorgeous lymph node I have seen all day. So just to give you the good news, everything looks very normal, very healthy. I wouldn't uh, do another mammogram until you're 40 unless you have anything change. Congratulations, this side so far looks absolutely wonderful. As far as I'm concerned, just a once a year ultrasound is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. There's no mass 
lenses, no calcifications to worry about, no architectural distortions, the skin isn't thickened, the nipples aren't retracted. Those are all the things we look for and it looks perfect. You're so proud. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous. I see nothing on this side as well. Fabulous. And so we're just going to take four more pictures and you, my lady, are done. Yay. That's sort of the end of the story. The story wraps up with reconstructive surgery, another year of her too, and then trying to like move on. I know Genevieve never thought about, I'm going to get breast cancer. Like, I know that was never a thought. The way her family rallied, the way like everyone came, it was just a beautiful community and it made me realize time and family, very important. Cherish, cherish them both. What would be scarier, going to the doctor or waiting months, years, and then put learning you have it, an issue that could have been fixed. There are so many platforms for you to go to to find a doctor. If you want a female doctor, if you want a black doctor, just go keep trying. Well, and you told your daughter <laughs> about our show. I said it was the go-to guys. You know, they almost called themselves the do-dudes. Okay, that would have been, that that been a bad choice. Do 